I think that's it. He's just packing one Aetheling. So yeah, he's got one throughout his seven. If that Aetheling gets thought seized. It's uh, going to be hard to win. Yeah, very, very, very hard to win. Now, the other card's an L6 sideboard here. He's got three copies of Last Breath, a Glare of Heresy, two Pithy Needle, two Jace Memory Death, who will actually give an alternate way to win, three Gain Saves, two Fiend Slayer Paladins, and two copies of Dispel. So he's got plenty of cards to bring in. Looks like uh, we see three Gain Saves, two Dispels, two Jaces. That's seven. One Glare of Heresy, you could argue, makes it eight, and two copies of Pithy Needle could be nine and ten cards to bring in. Of course, uh, Supreme Verdict, an easy one to cut. Uh, Celestial Flares in the main deck, those are pretty easy to slice and dice as well. And then two copies of Ratchet Bomb, I could see uh, L6 sideboarding out against Tran and his Esper deck. And you've got his sideboard in front of you. Yeah, um, Sync Collector, we got three of those. All of those obviously come in very good against the Control Mirror. Gain say three of them, two Negate, two Thought Season, a Blood Baron, and then a Pith and uh, Looks like uh, Mint is boarding in uh, 12 cards in this matchup. 12 cards. cards, yep, and he's got the easy ones to board out. Four Supreme Verdict, no fear of Blood Baron there. Two Doom Blade, easy board out. Devour Flesh, so that's seven. Uh, and then you can shave off a, like a Detention Sphere or two. You can shave off uh, maybe an Azorius Charm, and you can fit all these cards in. Uh, looking at the deck list over here, when you're looking at the blue white control player, uh, it's, it's tough to, it's really tough to get a game plan going. You have to bring in your Pithy Needles, and you have to hope that you can really just needle the things that you can't handle. And, you know, if you get your th eighth lane thought seeds, I guess you have an easy needle target while you just name their eighth lane and be able to deal with it. Sure. But I don't like, I, I really don't like Blue White's chances in this. But then again, he's doing well. Zach's doing well. Another Blue White player came up and spoke to me a second ago. He was also X and 1. Uh, he said he was probably not able to draw. So he's battling probably one of the other feature tables. And he said the same thing. He's like, well, my deck's consistent, but I just want to dodge Esper all day because. Let's not kid ourselves here when you're uh, not packing Thawseys. I'm not saying Blue White Red can beat Esper any day of the week. I, I know it's a slight dog <laughs> yeah. because uh, just Thawseys is just that good. And we saw a couple uh, quicken Thawseys earlier on camera. It's pretty fun to watch. Yeah, we saw that from Dave Thomas a little bit earlier. You see both players finishing up here with their sideboarding and mulligan and all that jazz. And I'm kind of with you. You know, uh, I like, again, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, where you know the people who believe in blue-white, they are strong believers. Yeah. They do not. Uh, they they know that they can play Esper. It's not like this is a secret of some sort. They know they have the option. They said, no, no, no. I like blue white. I think it gives me good matchups across the board. I have a better chance against aggro decks, which are popular nowadays, where Esper really folds to those aggressive strategies that people are playing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're following the Max, Max Teats School of Magic here, mm -hmm. who was uh, battling to some success last uh, Invitational there. So Tran's going to play a Temple of Silence. He's going to scry. You see L6 going to be on the play this game. So there's a Hollowed Fountain, and here comes a second Hollowed Fountain. Pass the turn back. And as you guys probably know at home, we're going to see a lot of draw go action here. Someone will probably break the silence with a Jace. But do remember that the sideboarded games, more things do happen instead yeah. of all the draw going and setting up what is basically just a an elaborate setup to resolve an Aetherling. Yeah, and you know what the funny thing is, too? You, you kind of give the advantage to Esper with all the Scrylands because they have eight of them. Um, Scrylands are not exactly the greatest after board because most of those cards you're not bottoming because mm -hmm. all those dead cards are out of your deck. Now we see a turn three Fiend Slayer Paladin here from Elsick, a card I did not expect him to board in. He has two in his sideboard. And I think maybe his thought process is, you know, I think, uh, I think Trans going to sideboard out a heavy amount of removal and I can get the job done this way, maybe steal a victory. So in it comes the Paladin. In for two, Elsick's going to gain two. Life total is oftentimes not terribly relevant in this matchup, but a Fiend Slayer Paladin could, oddly enough, go the way because a card that does not interact with it, Tran has drawn and just cast, which is Sin Collector. Yep, Sin Collector is uh, a little bit better than uh, Fiend Slayer Paladin, I think, in this situation. Uh, the only problem with Fiend Slayer, the plan with this, is uh, you have to hit him ten times with it because uh -huh. you're not going to get any other damage yep. otherwise. So, um, I mean, even if he gets him to four or six, that's not as effective as, say, an Azorius Charm Cantrip would have been. Yep. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, you never know. You could, uh, you could really poke him to death here. So you see Trans at 14, Elsick has moved up to 24. And we'll see what Tran can put together here. As you see him doing a lot of counting, here's the mana. There is your Jace Architect of Thought, see if that resolves. Because we could be in a situation here where, you know, Elsick is just like, I'm going to try to counter every single spell that you play yeah. and just beat you down this way. And that's exactly what he does. So Gainsay takes care of Jace. A quick untap Ooh, here from Elsick, and he draws his own Jace. Chase. Yeah, that's pretty good. Problem is, Min, we see a... Uh, we have a Trump for Fiend Slayer Paladin in our hand here with the old Blood Baron. Mm -hmm. Pretty much defeats him in every way possible. <laughs> oh, Blood Baron's a good magic card, yeah, so there's yeah, that. Yeah, pretty good. 
curious to see if Elsick is going to play that Jace. He's just going to pass the turn back. because he, like he has a Syncopate in his hand. Yeah, he has. If he had another land, I think he has a Negate or another Ooh, Counterspell. We're also. leading out with a Thoughtseize. Oh, man. I think he has two Counterspells, uh, or at least three. I, I see a lot of blue cards over yeah. there. There might be another gain, say. This is actually pretty interesting. I mean, if you have a negate here, you got to negate this. You can't let him see that hand. Yeah, I think it's an easy negate, but I don't think that he has one. Maybe he has a syncopate over there, and I think he's cards. wondering how much to syncopate for. Because you see his hand right now. He's got a dispel. He's got two. Okay, so he's got two dispels, a syncopate, and a jace. Um, yeah, for the record, I, I dispel has been one of those cards I've just never liked so much. And in the last season, you kind of argue for it because Syncs Revelation was everywhere. Uh, in this season, what do you think? I kind of like just paying one more and having negate just to have more versatility. I'm with you on that one. I would prefer to have Negate now because of the versatility, as you did mention, as Blood Baron of a Scope is going to resolve Transing an 8 life. And this is the problem that you brought up, Shaheen, which is 8's not 0. No, 8 is not 0. 8's quite a high life total. Yeah. And once Blood Baron connects once, it's pretty much, you know, negates everything that they did. Is he not tapping yet? I promise he will, uh, he, he will have to tap some lands yeah, for that, Jace. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because Jace, uh, Architect of Thought, first of all, the, okay, so there's a lot of things going wrong here. All right. Step one, those cards need to go to the bottom of the deck. Uh, yeah. Step two, you need to tap lands for your Jace, Architect of Thought. Yeah, so. that's a lot of action. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So yeah. let's get our board state up to snuff here, yeah, yeah. Mr. Elsick, which we have done here thanks to the judge down there. Yeah. That was a kind of fun interaction there. So Blood Baron's going to come in and going to take down Jace. Yeah, and then the turns of hard work by Zach negated. <laughs> yeah, by one attack by on Blood one Baron. attack, yep. yeah. It's just tough. I mean, if Zach had w other ways to follow up, there's actually a card that I think could be good in this situation, the sideboard, as he dispels the Sanctuary Revelation. Uh, what's is Daxon? Daxon would be a nice, sweet three-drop that would actually have a lot more board impactful damaging things that you could do. Fiend Slayer Paladin's going to come across here for two points of damage. You see... Elsick just going to untap here. He drew a Glare of Heresy for the turn, kind of mocking him as there's a white permit in play, but uh, can't actually uh, Glare of Heresy, that bad boy. Nope. Now Thoughtsy is going to get dissolved, so a little scry action here from Elsick. How do you feel about the, the, the dissolve on this Thoughtsy? I like it. It's just free, a free scry out of it. Pretty pretty much always just a uh, always fire it out there because, hey, you can scry one. Why not? Blood Baron going to come across into the red zone. We'll see if Tran does have a follow-up or not. All right, so Jace, Memory Adept drawn. <coughs> Not too bad. Powerful card. I don't know how powerful it is right now, though. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously seen better days, but it will come in in plus one if it does resolve. Uh, Min actually has a Hero's Downfall in his hand. He's got a Downfall, he's got a Gainsay, and he's got a, a, a uh, excuse me, uh, Dissolve. Dissolve, there okay, yeah. I, I want to say Dismiss. Yeah, I wish it was dismissed. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> I bet you do. Yeah, that'd be real sweet. So Jace is going to go up. Got a mill. Now Fiend Slayer Paladin is going to come into the red zone. So L6 is going to go up to 30, and Trant's going to go down to 8. Yeah, Mint's going to Heroes Downfall this end of turn. I don't think it's worth wasting two Blood Baron attacks on there. Um, he might as well just dispatch, especially with a handful of counter magic. There's no mm -hmm. reason not to. Pay much with you there. Here's the Heroes Downfall. There's a dispel. There is a gain, say. So a bunch of cards are traded. That Jace gets out of the way. Basically a five-mana draw card. So I don't know about you. I'm not in the market for five-mana cantrips. No, no, no. Never. It's not a really great deal. Yeah. Four-mana cantrip, as long as it counters a spell, I'm okay with oh, that. Oh, that's what you like? Yeah, yeah. We're back to that again. Big Dismiss fan. Yeah. Oh, uh, does it, is that a Renouncing Guilds? Oh, this is an attack from four, so that's a pretty aggressive attack. I think he has a Renouncing in. Guilds in his hand. That's a... Uh, that's a no, 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 no. That's a Glare of Heresy. I'm sorry. Not a Renounce. That looked very similar to me for a minute. Uh, let's see, what do you draw here? Is that a sweet Syn foil? Yeah, there's, there's a Sin Collector. You see Sin Collector is going to take that Glare of Heresy that Elsa can't cast, so he is out of cards now. And again, you see Min does have a Dissolve in his hand and a Mystery card, so Blood Baron is going to do what Blood Baron does and just keep right on attacking Elsick. And that, that foil card is a Hollow okay. Fountain and pass the turn back. So Elsick's going to untap and draw his card. No, I mean... Fiend Slayer Paladin can come in, yes. Uh, Mutavolt probably wants to stay home on defense to try to trade with a Sin Collector or just oh. try to find a second one, and there's a Dissolve, so get that uh, out of here. That's actually a pretty good draw for him because it allows men to get rid of that last counter spell. so uh -huh. now Zach actually is in the market for a comeback here. 
Uh, you know, we've seen crazier things. Thanks to Revelation for four would be real good. Even a verdict if he left it in will clear Blood Baron out and be able to get him back in this game. Elspeth would be great as well here as Tran's going to attack very quickly after untapping with his Blood Baron and passing the turn back. So the tensions fair at the top again, mocking yep. Elsick. Another, uh, another white removal spell for mm -hmm. the guy who is immune to the white. He's going to have to just say go here again. I mean, like you said, he could attack for two and then block Sync Collector with Muta Vault. He might be preparing for a bigger Sync of Revelation or maybe a, a verdict to be able to have the Muta Vault survive the post apocalyptic world here. Sorry, Skilled Gate here drawn for Elsick before he does potentially pass the turn back. You see Tran just drawing his card, setting it down very quickly, and then just attacking with the Blood Baron. I don't like that. Here. Rather save it for something else? Yeah, I mean, it's not going to do too much. Doesn't really help you a lot. You're not going to be able to kill him with this race here because he's negating every life you take away. Um, so I kind of like, I'd rather just hold that detention sphere, but we'll see. We'll see if it actually comes into play here because Zach could honestly just blank here on out. Blood Baron comes into the red zone. You see Trans drawing a couple cards here. It looks like a Pith and Needle among them. Say Pith and Needle land and in a gate where the draw steps. Another Fiend Slayer Paladin. So he's going to get into the red zone is Elsick again with Mutavolt and with the Fiend Slayer Paladin. There is a follow-up Fiend Slayer Paladin, so now the lifelinks are kind of negating each other. Yep. Min's still in the driver's seat here. And he's going to pay for Jace. Yep. That's the a, Architect. That's a good well. magic card. Not too bad. I was stubborn with him. I played three after rotation, and then everyone's like, four is the right amount, four is the right amount, and... I have conformed to society here. I believe that four is the right amount. Yeah, it's definitely. It's just, it's just the best planeswalker in standard right now. I think. Of course, I think that, but you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shockeroo. Shock. Yeah. Shocking. As here comes the Fiend Slayer Paladins and the Mutavolt. It's going to knock Chase down to two. I'm going to gain Elsick two life. And then pass turn back. You see, Men's going to quickly untap. Draw his card. See if he wants to keep up in Jace or cash it in. I think that'll be an interesting decision. I, if he's if he's planning on killing Zach here, keeps sending to his dome here, which is not really doing much with the life link. Uh, did we count the life link? He gained two from the last one. Yeah, he gained two from the last one. Okay. He did go up to ten and then down to six. I mean, he's not going to kill him that way because the Fiend Slayer Palace can offset the life loss, especially after the next hit on Jace here and get rid of it. Well, he might not be able to kill him that way, but I think he can kill him with what he's about to tap mana for, which is an Elspeth. Yeah. yeah. That's going to get the thumbs up. That's going to make some soldiers, and we'll see what uh, Tran wants to do with uh, the Jace in just a sec. Now you plus one it. With Elspeth, it's easy. I think you just keep your Planeswalker. Okay, especially when you're holding the gate, too. Why not? Plus one is the choice. So L6 is going to tap those two Fiend Slayer, player, Fiend Slayer Paladins, excuse me, and Immutable. Take a draw step here. See an island, and it looks like a Jace of his own now. So that's step one. Yep. See what he can find with this Jace, as I think uh, minusing is the uh, the choice of the day here. And Negate says that doesn't even resolve. Yeah, yeah, Thank so, you. Yeah, Negate's, uh, and you see a lot of this new Planeswalker rule. It's not really new anymore, but mm -hmm. you see a lot more of it nowadays because, you know, when everyone's playing four Jace in their control decks, there's just uh, mirror Planeswalkers everywhere, for better or for worse. Yeah. Also going to take a look. Pass the turn back and draw a card here. Will Tran, there's a Temple of Deceit. Time for a little scry. Looks like he's going to leave it on top. Again, see what he does want to do with the Jace. And he's got an Elspeth, so he's got some decisions to make. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can minus Jace here, I think, safely. I mean, it's interesting because he left his top, he left his card on top of his deck, so that implies that he wants to draw it. As Blood Baron's going to come across for four more points of damage here, knock Elspeth down to two. So assuming that he does want to draw the card, I wouldn't be surprised to see him minus it. But he's going to start here by upping Elspeth, putting three more soldiers into play. We'll Tran, and then we'll see exactly what he wants to do with the Architect of Thought. Yeah, especially with Elspeth with clogging the board, there's no danger to minusing Elspeth here, or Jace here. Yeah, and that's what he's going to do. So Revelation, Island, and a Jace. And kind of interesting situation, too, because he could have actually killed Elsick that turn with the Revelation. Because he d he goes up to 30-plus, and Elsick 
is already wow. underneath the 10, so he could have made it a flyer in plus 6, plus 6. I think Tran may have missed that interaction because it doesn't come up very often. But either way, Esper Control does it again over blue-white. Min Tran defeats Zach Elsick, and that means that Min Tran is moving on, like Robert Bernie, to the elimination rounds. Yeah, we're not seeing a lot of upsets here on camera. Mm -hmm. When it comes to matchup versus matchup, we're seeing Esper beat the decks that should. We're seeing Esper get crushed by the decks that should get crushed by with these aggro decks. Uh, I mean, we saw David Thomas win, but obviously he's a very, very good Magic player who's probably one of the better Esper players in the area. And he was, uh, I think he's in top eight now, right? Uh, not, not, I actually don't think so. I think oh. he had, ended up losing. Oh, he times. lost. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, because he was 6 0. That's why at one point. Yeah, well, 10 round tournament. That's true, yeah. yeah. yeah 6 0 is not what it used to be. Yeah.